Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's Tip Tuesday video. So for today, I'm actually going to be sharing a video that I have honestly wanted to film for quite some time and I hope that it will be very, very helpful in answering some frequently asked questions I receive about digital planning, some technology stuff, the planning to prosper products that I offer in my Etsy shop, all of the above. So without further ado, I have a very long list, so we are going to get through it. I'm going to put timestamps in this video to make it really easy to get to the information that you need. And yeah, so we are just going to start out with the basics. So for those that are new to digital planning, I first want to share a little disclaimer. I have a ton of videos available on the Prosper You Planner tutorial playlist right here on my channel about a lot of these topics that I'm going to be sharing. So if you want some more in-depth, detailed, information, definitely check out those videos. I'm going to share some basics about digital planning, but I actually have a getting started with digital planning video that is much more detailed up on my playlist. So definitely check that out if you're new to digital planning and you want some more information, but I'm just going to answer a couple basic questions here. So the first question is, what is a digital planner? What is this? A digital planner is essentially a hyperlinked PDF document. Most digital planners are hyperlinked PDF documents. There are a couple apps that are available, but the PDF documents are made to be used with PDF reading apps like GoodNotes, Notability, NoteShelf, Zoto, things of that nature. They are not apps that sync with your Google Calendar and things like that. You can add links into them yourself through different apps. I believe Zoom Notes is one of the PDF reading apps that offers that ability. But in general, the digital planner itself is not built to be able to do that. It's meant to mimic the paper planning, you know, whole process and things like that. So it's like dumping your paper planner and stickers and all of that good stuff right here onto your iPad or whatever other device you may be using for digital planning. So that is what a digital planner is in a nutshell. And then what do you need to digital plan? To digital plan, all that you need is a tablet device. I personally use and recommend the iPad. I just find that it's one of the most user-friendly options out there. And yeah, I'm just a little biased because I've used Apple products for a very long time. But yeah, you can use Samsung devices, Android devices, as long as you can use a stylus. I use an Apple Pencil, but there are other stylus options out there to write on your planner, then you are good to go. And then you will also need a PDF reading app, as I mentioned earlier. So I personally use and recommend GoodNotes, but there are a ton of them out there. I mentioned a few earlier, Zoto, Note Shelf Notability, OneNote is another option. Lots of options out there, but I, again, use and recommend GoodNotes. And that's about it. That's really all you need besides the digital planner, of course. <laughs> you need a digital planner um, as well, but just a tablet device, PDF reading app, a stylus, and your planner and you're good to go. You can get other accessories like a little pencil grip. I love using this grip just so that my hand doesn't get kind of crampy. And then I have a case for my iPad. I have a screen protector. Those are all optional accessories that you can get for your device. Of course, you can purchase digital stickers, digital planner covers. There's lots of different options, but as far as the essentials, those are the only things you'll need. And I have a video up on the tutorials playlist that goes through all of that as well. The next question is, what are the benefits of digital planning? The pros, if you will, of digital planning. And I'll go over some of the cons too. So I just realized it has officially been over a year since I made the official switch to full on digital planning. I used to use Erin Condren products, Planner Kate stickers, then I went kind of hybrid and I used um, the Daily Duo in addition to a weekly digital planner and then I jumped 
full on and use digital planning for everything. And I have to say, I will never go back. I'm one of those that will say like, never say never, but honestly, like I will never <laughs> go back to paper planning. I just don't see the point at this point, <laughs> honestly. I mean, partially because obviously I have a digital planning and sticker shop, but you just can't beat the flexibility of this system. And for me, that's what I needed more than anything. The convenience, the flexibility, the fact that it all syncs with my iPhone. I can pull up my digital planner right on my iPhone. I can customize this any way I want. I will never run out of stickers or anything like that. I used to have, and I have a video on this too, why I made the switch, why I ditched my Erin Condren planner and switched to digital planning, but I used to have stacks and stacks of stickers, stacks of planners, so much. I would switch things up all the time. That is actually what inspired my Prosper U planner system with the brand new hub and everything, the hub. There's details about that in a new releases playlist. I won't go into that entirely right now, but that is the most recent planner system I've launched and that was my inspiration behind that was I wanted to switch things up all the time and I felt like I was searching for planner piece and I would just never find it and then finally I just realized like maybe that piece lies in the ability to switch things up as I need to because life changes throughout the year and it's I would always beat myself up for not sticking in the same planner for the full year but I'm one of those where I like change. I like to switch things up. I like to try new things out. And so, voila, digital planning makes all of that so possible. There's infinite possibilities. Whereas if you get a paper planner, that's what you get. You gotta like Franken plan, uncoil, recoil, if you wanna move things around and all that kind of stuff. Here, it's just copying, pasting pages, taking pages out, moving things around, piecing them together. The Prosper U Planner system is a system that is meant to be able to be changed, evolved, you know, to just, yeah, make it what you want it to be. So that I would say is the main benefit, honestly, to digital planning. It's just the flexibility, the possibilities that are available to you is amazing. And I really thought maybe I'm gonna miss the paper because, you know, I personally am one of those that I like the smell of paper. I like the feel of paper. So I thought to myself, maybe I'm gonna miss it so much and I'm gonna wanna go back. I haven't missed it a single solitary bit. Honestly, I read using paperbacks and I feel like I get that paper, you know, need from my paperback books that I read. But as far as planning is concerned, I feel like the flexibility and all of that, everything I'm able to do, digital planning, just trumps the need for smelling and feeling paper, if that makes any sense. Now, this is just me speaking from my own personal experience. I know digital planning is not for everybody. Just like paper planning doesn't work for some people. We're all different people out there with different needs and everything like that, different preferences. So I'm just speaking from my own experience, but yeah, long story short, that's the main benefit I would say of digital planning. Now, I probably, I didn't think about this before, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my list to film a video in the very near future. And I will chat about, you know, the switch to digital planning and all that. I mentioned some cons, so some cons are, yes, you do have to charge your, you know, iPad, but how hard is that <laughs> to do? It's very easy to charge your iPad. Um, yes, you have to make sure that your software is up to date. Yes, sometimes it lags and it's slow or whatever, but honestly, those times are very few and far between and all of the benefits of it completely outweigh the cons completely outweigh them for me anyway. So maybe I'll go ahead and do a video on that more specifically, kind of dive into it a little deeper. If you are interested in something like that, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Okay, and then the last question I wanted to answer for this segment of the Q&A is, will my planner specifically, uh, planning to prosper planners, will the P2P planners work with XYZ app and program. This is a question I receive all of the time. Will your products work with OneNote? Will the products work with Notability? Will the products work with Zoto on Samsung devices, on Android devices? The answer is yes. 
the planner itself is compatible with your device and your program as long as your device and the program you're using is compatible with hyperlinked PDF programs. Again, the, or PDF documents rather. The digital planner itself is not an app. It's not something that needs to like, you know, um, have software upgrades and updates and things like that. It is simply a hyperlinked PDF document. So OneNote interacts with hyperlinked PDF documents. One, um, Zoto interacts with that, uh, Android devices. So you just want to check to make sure that you have an app, a PDF reading app, annotation app that you want to use that interacts with hyperlinked PDF documents and you are good to go. So I wanted to be sure to answer that question because again, that's a question I receive very frequently and you guys always come to me if you have questions. I am more than happy to help anytime, but I really wanted to film this video just to kind of put all this out there because it's just questions I receive almost on a daily basis and so I thought it'd be really helpful to kind of get all of the specifics on that. So the next section I want to go into is general tech questions and file organization tips. And I do want to create a video completely just dedicated to file organization, sticker organization, all that. So that is to come, but I will answer just kind of a high level overview of it. So when it comes to organizing stickers and files, one recommendation I have is to always, always, always save a backup on your files. So on iPad devices, we have a files app, which is that little blue folder right there. It's the same sort of system you're going to find on any computer where you're saving things to desktops, you're creating folders on a desktop or subfolders within folders and organizing your files there. The files app works the same way. There is a desktop there. So what I would personally recommend doing is create a digital planning folder on your desktop, make it so super easy to find. And within that digital planning folder, put a file for stickers, a file for widgets, a file for inserts, a file for planners, and a file for add-ons if you're buying things specifically from my shop. And then just plug things in there as you go, save copies and everything like that because you never know, you know, maybe one day you accidentally delete something or something like that happens. Now, it's very possible to recover a lot of deleted items. By the way, I know if you go into GoodNotes, into your trash bin, you can always recover deleted items. So I don't want to scare anyone, but if you want a fresh copy of something, want to start over, um, if you've got your hub downloaded and saved to your files, you can reuse it every single year without needing to buy a new one. It was very intentional the way I designed this to where you just purchase once and you can reuse it over and over and over again. But it's always good to have backups. So that is one rec recommendation I would have is to save everything, any file on your desktop make it really easy to use just have one file with sub like folders within it and do it that way and then you can even take it further and you can put like in your stickers subfolder you could put you know fall kits spring kits summer kits you know do it that way in your widgets you can do you know health and fitness widgets you can organize it however you would like but that's my personal recommendation and when it comes to good notes if you want to organize things in good notes i will be creating a good notes kind of 101 type of video soon but i would do the same thing because in good notes you create you know files so i've got all these different files here and things like that so I have in, in progress where I put sticker kits that I'm working on. I have 2022 sticker kits where I have all of my sticker kits I've released for the 2022 year um, right in this file. I have a file for widgets. You can organize it, whatever makes sense to your brain. My brain, I just like to have very clear, like I want it to be so super easy to find. So I try to have as least amount of folders as I possibly can. So I really like the one main folder with subfolders within it, um, but other people might want on their desktop just widgets 
and add-ons and stickers maybe not inside a folder so it's a little bit even easier to find um, I just don't like clutter of any kind <laughs> I don't like clutter on my device I don't like clutter in my home so I try to keep things as clean as I possibly can but that would be my advice for organizing stickers and files and things of that nature so the next question I received is about iCloud syncing, you know, updating your software and all of that kind of stuff. And yeah, so if you're using GoodNotes specifically, you can make sure that you have iCloud syncing on by going to this little cog wheel up here. You'll want to make sure across your devices you're logged in to the same iCloud account. I know I have two iCloud accounts. I have a personal one and I have a work one. So you'll want to make sure that you're logged into the same iCloud account on all devices. I think honestly it helps too to make sure that all of your devices are on the same Wi-Fi network when it comes to syncing things and also make sure that all of your software is up to date. I know whenever I receive that little pop-up on one of my devices that's like, you know, 10.07. XYZ blah blah <laughs> software update is available, I just automatically go into all my devices. I make sure that they all have that same software on them because if they're not all updated to the same software, um, it can create issues, especially when it comes to syncing things because some apps will just stop interacting with each other and all of that. So, but to make sure that iCloud syncing is turned on, you go to this little cog wheel up here and you go to settings and then you're going to go to iCloud settings right here. And you can see that I have use iCloud and it's checked on right there and it last synchronized 23 seconds ago. So you'll wanna make sure that that is turned on to get your iCloud to sync across your devices. Now, the not so fun answer, Sometimes iCloud has problems. Sometimes GoodNotes has problems. If the app developers behind the scenes are making some updates or things like that, stuff can get wonky and there's nothing you can do about it. I've seen in some of the digital planning groups recently that there's been some delays with syncing and I also just received a notification that the software needed to be updated so maybe Apple's already fixed it, I don't know, but that you're just at the mercy of the app developer at that point. There's not really much you can do besides just practicing patience, which I know is not easy for us to do. I have a huge problem <laughs> with being patient, so I completely understand. But yeah, so that's what you'll wanna make sure though to do is make sure iCloud is toggled on here. Again, you just go to the little cog wheel, go to your settings, iCloud settings, and you can make sure it's all turned on there. And you'll wanna do that if you're using multiple iPads and things like that, you'll wanna make sure it's good to go. I believe that that will probably update across the board, I would assume, for all the apps on all your devices. If you toggle it on, I would assume it would turn it on on all of them, but I am not an Apple expert, you guys. <laughs> I am just speaking from my own experience mainly here. I'm not a tech expert or anything like that. I'm one of those where I like double checking things. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But if you want to just double check, make sure they're all toggled on. You can do that. So now the next big section I wanted to go over, I broke everything down into sections here just to kind of make it flow a little bit better is GoodNotes specific frequently asked questions and questions that you all provided in Facebook, um, in our Facebook group and on Instagram and all that good stuff. So an error message when you're downloading your GoodNotes file. Um, I am going to log out real quick of my Dropbox because I want to share this with you guys. Um, so I'm gonna sign out from this Dropbox. Yes, there we go. It is signing out. Okay, so I am signed out of Dropbox. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to my June listings I just released, and I'm gonna open up one of the PDFs that take you to the Dropbox. So we'll do the complete kit for kit 25, just as an example. So when you purchase um, stickers from my shop, you're going to get a GoodNotes file and individual PNG images. And you're going to access those if you're purchasing the complete kit, especially through Dropbox. So this is, I believe, what 
you know, those are talking about when they say they're receiving an error message. So I'm going to tap on, click here to download stickers. It's going to open it. And there it goes. And I'm going to go to the GoodNotes file. So you'll always know which one is the GoodNotes file because it'll say .GoodNotes after it. The individual PNG images are for those that are not using GoodNotes. So you're able to pull those up and have all the individual stickers ready to go. I have got everything categorized in there. So there's a folder for budget stickers, a folder for pattern stickers, icons. I tried to make it as organized as I could to make them as easy as possible because there are over 400 stickers packed into there. And then you get the hex codes as well. So I think what those are talking about when they um, say they're receiving an error message is they try to open this GoodNotes file and it's going to load up here, but it will not preview. So it's going to say some sort of error message about like, you know, sorry, there was an error or something like that. All that that is talking about is being able to preview the document because this system here for this download process, you can preview like PDF documents, you can preview Word documents, things like that, but you can't preview GoodNotes documents. So this did not actually replicate that process. But as you can see, I can't see anything. I can't see the actual sticker kit here at all. So some devices, depending on the browser you're using, it might say, sorry, this cannot be shown or something like that. Just ignore it. It looks scarier than it actually is. You should still have um, either like a download button up here. It's gonna vary device to device and browser to browser and stuff like that. So I've seen in some screenshots that customers have provided, the download button's been up here. You tap on the download button, it will still download beautifully for you. For me, I can click on export here and then I can save to my files, I can save to my desktop, and then I can still open it that way when I go into GoodNotes, um, import, and then I'll go to my desktop. And there it is, kit 25, and you'll see it's gonna open it just fine. So just ignore that little message. When it's a GoodNotes file, it's not gonna let you preview it. It's gonna give you an error message because it can't preview it. Just ignore it, continue to click either export or download, and it'll still work just fine. So um, I wanted to be sure that, you know, I mentioned that, and then also, there is a video um, all about downloading from Dropbox and getting all your stuff into GoodNotes and all that um, on the tutorials playlist as well. So if you want some more detailed information about that process, a step-by-step -step in a little bit slower mode <laughs> and just more details as I mentioned, then definitely check out that video. Okay, and then the next thing that is on my list is lag. So lag is a big thing in the planner, digital planner community. Um, and I will say from my own personal experience on both like designing planners as well as using digital planners that it doesn't matter how small the file size is. If you are putting a bunch of stickers on a page it is going to lag a little bit, and I'll show you what I mean with the sticker kits. So if I try to fly through these, see that little like white square it goes away within a matter of seconds, but that's the lag that people are talking about. Sometimes, depending on how many stickers you have on the page, it'll kind of lag a little bit. Sometimes it'll be totally fine. I find it helps a little bit to kind of flip through things a little bit more slowly, but if I try to just fly through it, it's going to lag. See, there we go, now it's lagging more. So there are a lot of stickers on this particular page because there's all these individual date dots and all of that. So when you are planning in your actual planner, I'm going to go to, actually leave the hyperlinks on, I'm going to go to my current weekly view and you'll see it did that same thing. It honestly goes away within a couple of seconds. And again, these are very small compressed file sizes that I use for my shop. Um, and I do that because I want to make sure to decrease lag as much as possible. But when it comes to stickers and you know customers, the user on the other side of the screen putting stickers in to the planner, if there's a bunch of stickers, it's going to lag a little bit. There's really no way to entirely get around that. So you'll see it's going to kind of take a second. It only takes a couple of seconds, but one workaround for that is 
Um, and actually a couple things before I get into it real quick. Um, if you're finding that GoodNotes is being slow in general, make sure you empty your trash can. You can do that just by tapping on your cogwheel and going to trash bin and there'll be an option there to empty your trash bin. So that's one option. Make sure your app is completely up to date, that your software is completely up to date. Sometimes GoodNotes is just a little bit glitchy and it's gonna lag a little bit and you just gotta wait it out. You can submit tickets to their customer support team and everything like that, but um, sometimes it's just a little slower and there's no real explanation for it, which I know can drive us batty sometimes, but honestly, I have been doing this for quite some time now and it doesn't happen very often. When it does, of course it stinks, but it doesn't happen very often. So, but one workaround too is what you can do so I'm on this page here right now. I can tap on this little rectangle with the arrow sticking out and I can go to export this page. And this is when you're all done, when you've got your whole weekly spread done and you're good to go and you don't wanna make any changes or anything like that. You just wanna kinda get your stuff to load a little bit more quickly. I can export this page as an image. And then I'm gonna tap on save image and then I'll go to a blank weekly view right here. I can go to my photo tool. Here is the little photo of that page. And what I can do is I can just drag this over and layer it right on top. Um, sometimes it helps when you're in landscape mode to put it in portrait mode. I find that that helps a little bit with getting this um, across all the way. But yeah, you can just kind of line it up that way. And then, now it's one image. It looks exactly the same <laughs> as this page, but it's gonna load much more quickly because there's just one image you know, on here. So that is one option that you have, is to export it as an image, layer it right on top. You can just delete all of this, and that's why, again, make sure it's finalized, you're happy with it, you're not making any changes, delete everything, and then just layer this right on top, and that will help tremendously as well. So that's one tip I have to decrease that lag. But like I said, if you've got a ton of stickers on there, there's not much you can do about it. Um, but, you know, it just takes a couple seconds for it to load. Like, just literally, probably even two seconds there. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I have to say about lagging. And then one um, question I get to, and I'm just gonna, oh, images is off. I get this question a lot as well. I'm trying to copy one of my stickers and I just keep getting a message that says, take screenshot. That happens when I try to lasso this and it's gonna just say, take screenshot. That happens when on your lasso tool up here, when you tap on it, you'll see there's a bunch of different toggles. When images is toggled off, that's when you're gonna get that message. You're gonna try to pick this up and copy it, but the lasso is not recognizing it because it is a image and you have images checked off. If I check images back on, I'll go to lasso this tap it and now I have all of my options. So that's a really important note to make about the lasso tool. If you want, um, currently GoodNotes does not offer a lock feature, so I'm hoping they do. They did do a survey pretty recently about this, but lock would allow you to just lock something in place and not worry about it moving around. But the workaround for that now, too, is to go to the lasso tool. If you don't want to pick up any handwriting, you can toggle off handwriting, images, tech bo text boxes, comments, all sorts of different things. So. Um, when you're working with inserts especially, having images checked off is really helpful. That way you don't pull up the insert and you can move um, stickers around still without the lasso by using actually the photo tool, which you can just tap on any sticker with the photo tool and it's gonna allow you to move it and all that good stuff. So that is um, what you can do to fix the take screenshot message when you're lassoing a sticker. And then another um, question I get quite often too is that you know, the hyperlinks aren't working in my planner. What do I do? They're not working in my planner. So let me go back to my planner here. Now I've got a bunch of hyperlinks in my planner. Let me just actually go back to my homepage and um, yeah, I'll go back here. So there's a ton of hyperlinks on this page right here. If I have the pen tool on, which you know it's on when you can see your toolbar right here and this little icon here is the little pen. So when I've got it turned on, 
I can write, I can lasso, I can do all these sorts of things. With the lasso, you can access hyperlinks if you just long press on it. It's going to um, highlight it and you can tap open link and it's going to take you to that link. So I can go back to my home page by long pressing and open link. Obviously that takes just a little bit longer. Again, just a couple seconds. But if you're just tapping to go, you're not going to go anywhere because the pen tool's on. So to get the hyperlinks to work, to activate them, as you, if you will, is to make sure your pen tool is turned off, which you'll do by tapping the pen tool up here. Your toolbar will disappear, and now I can literally get to any page super quickly just by tapping, by um, having that pen tool off, because now all the hyperlinks are activated, I'm good to go, so, that is how that works and that's how to fix that issue of the hyperlinks are not working. And then the next question I have is how to change pen color. So I'm just gonna go to some note paper here. Or actually, yeah, I'll, I'll keep on the note paper. Um, and then I'm gonna put this in landscape mode or in portrait mode so you guys can see it a little bit better. Turn my pen tool off to access my toolbar. And to change your pen color, it's very simple to do. You can also change the pen color, the highlighter color and all of that. So if I tap on my pen here, I get three color options. All you have to do is tap on a color, and then if you have the hex codes, which you do always receive the hex codes with my kits, so I always give them right up here, and you can also see the exact color that it is right up here. So let me go ahead and just open this in a new window, and I will zoom in real quick to one of the colors. Let's go ahead and do this dark blue one. And I want to change, or actually let's do yellow so it's a little bit more noticeable. I want to change that black to that yellow color. Then I'm going to hit custom down here and double tap here so I can highlight, get my keyboard up, which I can do by tapping on this keyboard button here. And then I'm just going to type in my hex code. So E2A 95C. And as you can see, there's the color right there. I'm gonna add it to my presets. And now there's that color and I can literally, you'll see it's a perfect match. Now I've got that color as a pen color. And that's really helpful if you want your pen, your highlighters to match your kits and all that fun stuff. And again, that's why I just love digital planning so much is that the customization options are literally limitless when it comes to digital planning. So that is how you change the pen color, highlighter color, it works the exact same way. You tap on the highlighter, tap the color you wanna change, plug in the hex code and you're good to go. So that's how you do that. Um, you don't have to add it to your presets by the way. You can if you wanna save it, if you plan on using it again and you don't want to plug in the hex code every single time, but you don't have to, um, just FYI there. So like, for example, if I um, go ahead and type in a random one, let's do like, so let's say I just want like F24 or something. I it changed it already up here. I don't have to add it to my presets if I just tap off this. There's that highlighter color right there that we um, added. So you don't have to add it to your presets unless you plan on using it again. Then I would definitely recommend doing that. You can also, you know, remove pen colors and stuff from that. I'll share more about that. There's tons of um, good notes, tips, and things like that that I want to share, and I'll create a separate video for that um, in the near future. The next question I have is all about layering um, stickers, and you know, sometimes your stickers get be um, stuck behind other stickers, and how to remedy all of that. So I am going to pull up one of my sticker kits. This is sticker kit number one, and I've got my lined paper here. So. Good Notes works in layers. So whatever sticker you put down first is what is going to be on your bottom layer. So let's say I grab this flag right here. I'm gonna make it nice and big. And let's say I want to put, I don't know, um, this calculator right on top of it. I'm gonna do that. Now if I put them in the order I wanted them in, that calculator is just gonna sit really nicely right on top of that flag. However, let's say Let's delete that, we'll leave the calculator there. Let's say I put the calculator down first and I want the flag now and I go to put that on there and then look at that. <laughs> the flag is sitting right on top 
of the calculator. So to remedy that, if you've got a sticker stuck behind another sticker, tap on the photo tool right here, tap on, just find a little spot, you can even zoom in, tap on the calculator, and then what I do personally is I just kind of move it away from the sticker, and then I will just lasso it, cut it, and paste it, and now GoodNotes is recognizing that I put that layer on last, so now it's sitting right back on top of there. And then I did get a question too about, um, and I can even show you guys actually real quick. I'm gonna go to April, cause I just put this little picture in and it's adorable, so why not show you? So I've got this little picture of our cute little puppies. So um, to use the photo frames, let me show you guys kind of how that's done. And I think to do that, I'm just gonna go to a blank page. So I'm actually gonna copy all of this and then I'll, I'll work with it here in just a second. Let's go to a blank page though. So I'm gonna go to blank and then I'll zoom in and we will paste and I'm going to make that a little smaller. I will delete this because I don't need it and there we go. So these are two separate entities. These are the little photo frames I have that are hollow in the middle. So I did that purposely to make it really easy to get your photos to fit in there perfectly without having to crop them and resize them a whole ton to get them to fit on top of the photo frame. So it's best to layer your photos behind your frames. And so let's say I'm gonna go ahead and act like I put this photo frame down first, which is how I like to do it. I like to kind of lay that out. And then I'm gonna grab my picture of the puppies. Now you can see it looks kind of different. Um, you know, this photo is right on top of the photo frame. So you can see when I dragged it over here, it's layer, layered on top. So same deal. What you wanna do is if you still have your photo frame on top of another sticker, you'll want to use the photo tool and tap it and move it over um, into a space where it's not gonna be layered on top of another sticker. Lasso it, cut it, paste it, and then layer it right on top there. But you can also just lasso if it's just on a blank page like this, it's not sitting on top of another sticker, then I can just lasso it and it's not gonna pick up the picture of the puppies because the puppies picture is not part of that little part that I lassoed. And then I can do cut and paste and that will accomplish the same thing. So just remember that everything works in layers when it comes to GoodNotes. So whatever you want on top should be the last sticker you put there. Um, but then it's really super simple and quick to, you know, finagle things around as you want. Um, and that is, the beauty of digital planning. You have that ability where you don't have to peel up a sticker a million times or anything like that. You can just move things around however much you want. <laughs> so that is that. And then the next question I received is about exporting add-ons. And this is more specific to the planner system offered through Planning to Prosper. So exporting an add-on that was used in a previous planner and putting it in your new planner. So I wanted to share that process with you guys. So I am going to go ahead I'm gonna go back to my homepage here. So let's say I want to put my five-year journal, or even actually, I'm gonna do my perpetual calendar because I do need to put that in here. Um, I'm gonna be updating a lot of these, but let's say um, I wanna put my perpetual calendar right here, and I had my perpetual calendar in my last planner, my 2021 planner, and now I wanna put it in my 2022 planner. So I'm gonna go to my previous planner, which is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the home where it is. So I've got my perpetual calendar behind this divider. So this is the Prosper You planner that I released prior to the whole hub system that just came out. So I have quite a few customers who had purchased this planner, decided to switch to the hub system and they're wanting to move their add-ons over. Now I do have a video as well that goes over all of this very specifically. It's the All About Add-ons Part 2 video. So if you want more of a step-by-step -step type of video, definitely check that out. But I will just show you really quick how it works. It's so easy to do, you guys, so easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate on over to my perpetual calendar. Here it is right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on the four little squares here. Now, if you're using a program outside of GoodNotes, you'll want to look up a similar process to my knowledge and just kind of playing around with like note shelf notability, things like that. 
They all have very similar capabilities when it comes to exporting documents and things of that nature. So just FYI there, this is very specific to GoodNotes and I am not an expert when it comes to other PDF reading apps, but just go ahead and look up some instructions usually on YouTube or Google or something like that, a similar process and I'm sure it's at least a little bit identical. <laughs> so, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit select. So again, I tap these four little squares there and you can see it's highlighted that first page of that perpetual calendar. So I'm going to hit select and now this is going to allow me to select multiple pages. So I'm going to select this one here, all the pages of my perpetual calendar. If it's a longer document, you can also just tap and then you can, you can also tap and then you can like kind of go through and scroll through and tap multiple and you can scroll, but I don't want to get all of that. So I just want my perpetual calendar and that is it. So now I've got all the pages selected for my perpetual calendar. And now you have two options. So you're going to go to export and you can export as a PDF or as GoodNotes image. You wouldn't really need to use that. The only time you might want to export as an image is if you're, you know, putting your pages into a book like Shutterfly, if you're wanting to print stuff out or something like that, or if you want to, you know, save an image and use it as an insert. That's something that we talked about recently in our Facebook group. You can always export any page in a planner as an image via GoodNotes and use that as a insert if you would like to. Um, so that's essentially all that inserts are, planner inserts for digital planners. They're usually just images that you're layering on top of a PDF document. So if you export as a PDF, the hyperlinks will not work. You will not be able to make any changes. I really don't see that being a popular option. I'm sure a lot of you want your hyperlinks to work still in your add-ons and everything. So what you're gonna wanna do more than likely 9.5 times out of 10 is to do good notes. Now you can do the same process if you want to, you know, export all your pages. I know for me, I'll be exporting all of my business budget pages for my accountant at the end of this year to give to him. So in that case, I would export as a PDF because it doesn't really, I, I don't need the links to work or anything like that. But you're gonna wanna export as good notes file. So I'm gonna hit tap on good notes. I'm gonna hit export and it's gonna export the document. I'm going to go ahead and save it to my files. I'm going to save it to my desktop, hit done. And now I'm going to go to my brand new planner. And by the way, when you export as a GoodNotes file as well, you can make edits. So you can change your text, you can change your stickers and all of that kind of stuff. It's really cool. So I definitely recommend exporting as a GoodNotes file. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on my divider for section three. I can label it perpetual calendar and you might hear my kiddos they're getting ready for bed <laughs> so you may hear them in the background but um, we're almost done so I've labeled my section and now I'm gonna hit this little plus button up here and I'm going to tap on import and then I'm going to go I'm on my desktop already so that's perfect so I'm gonna go and find that um, file I saved which is right here so I'm gonna tap on that. And now my perpetual calendar, voila, is right behind that divider. When you tap on this plus button, you'll wanna make sure after is selected to have your document go after that divider. But when I scroll over real quick, there's my perpetual calendar. And you can use a perpetual calendar to track birthdays, anniversaries, big events, things of that nature. But the one big thing you'll notice is that the links all work. When I tap on November, it's going to November. Tap on July, it is going to July. Tap on May, it's going to May, and so on and so forth. Now, I am revamping a lot of my add-ons and everything like that right now. You tap on the little header up here, scroll over, and now you're back in your hub. Um, in the new add-ons, it'll have the back button just to make it a little bit more obvious where to tap to get back there. But in the current add-ons, that's pretty much how they all work is you tap on the header, that'll take you back to the first page to where you just scroll right over and boom, you're right back in the hub. So that is how you export any add-on you've used in a previous planner and put in a new planner. So the five-year journal is a perfect example. 
five-year journal you're going to use for five years. So you're going to want to export that you know, as a good notes file each year and put it into your new hub and everything like that. You also don't have to technically use a new hub if you don't want to. You could, if you wanted to, delete some pages or export, you know, maybe export your monthly pages that you want to save as a PDF and then delete it and kind of have a fresh start that way. The hub is built for that. Um, so my year at a glance page here is actually, these are stickers that are available in the hub library. So you see that gray box there, it tells you where to place it. So you can actually just redo this every single year, not ever have to buy a new hub. Maybe you just want to export the pages you want to save as a PDF, then delete everything and kind of keep it simple that way. That's another option you have. But I know that's not an option if you had a previous, you know, the previous Prosper You Planner, you're going to want to export any add-on you had, put it in there. So that's how you do it. So I will be doing a full setup of my 2023 hub. Um, later on this year when it gets to that, be that time. And so I think that'll be really helpful for those who are wanting some more, you know, inspiration for that. And then the last little thing I wanted to share is just a simple tip. So I feel like this is really, really helpful. So I'm in my hub right now. Let's say I am going to the month of April and I want to look at my monthly view. I want to plan out my week as well. One little tip I have is you can actually split screen and have like the GoodNotes app running two different, like two, what am I trying to say? Two simultaneously, I'll just show you. It's getting late, so I'm losing my train of thought a little bit, but you can have two different screens up. So all you have to do for that is take this little app, pull it on over here, and you have GoodNotes running all at the same time <laughs> here. So um, that's a little option that you have, by the way, is just have good notes open and then pull up the app, come over here. And what I can do that way, now I don't actually want to be um, in that sticker kit, so I'm gonna try this again. So there we go, now I'm in my document. So I can go to my hub. So I have two different versions open here. And then let's say I'm planning out this last week of the month. Um, now I've got my little picture on here so I'm going to just tap that and delete it but let's say I want to look at my month as I'm planning out my week you can do that very easily just kind of plan out your week while looking at everything that's going on that's just a little tip I wanted to share so let me just show you that one more time I've got my you know monthly view open here I personally always keep good notes in my little um hub station. I think this is actually called a hub <laughs> down here um, at all times. So I can just take this app, pull it on over here. You just hold it down, pull it over there, and you can kind of look at two different things at the same time. I feel like that's just a helpful, you know, tip I wanted to share. So instead of kind of navigating back and forth, you kind of click back to your month and then you try to remember everything and all that kind of stuff. You could also have like your month maybe pulled up on your phone and then look at your phone while you're planning your month. This is the beauty of it is like everything syncs so I can very easily pull up my planner on my phone. In fact, let me go ahead and do that real quick just to share with you. So let's say I've got my week um, here. I'm just gonna navigate to my month. So now I've got my month right there and I can look at my month on my phone as I plan out my week. So that's another option. Just to be able to look at two different pages at the same time, I feel like it's helpful. You could even take it up a step further, have a split screen going, have your phone going, have three different <laughs> screens all at the same time, you know? So I just wanted to share that little tip because um, I feel like it's gonna be helpful to me because I have definitely been guilty. Just coming from the paper planning experience and like having to like flip back and forth, that's what I'm used to. And so sometimes I forget that there's all these conveniences that are available at our fingertips with digital planners that are really awesome and super, super helpful. So anyways, that is it for this FAQ video. If you have more questions, definitely let me know down below. I would love to do more of these videos. I'm kind of calling this a part one video I believe I caught all of the questions. I wrote them all down. So I believe I caught them all. If there were any that came in late, I might have missed them. So like I said, if you have any more questions at all, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. I would be happy to film another one of these videos. Andrew, my husband, actually suggested that I should go live once a month and maybe do like a live Q 
Q&A, digital planning, budgeting type of thing. So that's something I'm thinking about as well. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. I'd love to know. But I hope that you found this video to be helpful. I'm going to do my best to get it as organized as I can, edit it really well, make it you know, easier to get to the sections you want to get to through timestamps and all that good stuff. But hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to catch all my future videos. Here come my kiddos. <laughs> so I will chat with y'all later. You want to say bye? Bye. <laughs> all right. Bye guys. Color. So <clears throat> what color should we use first? Hmm. Let's see. I think I'm going to pick green. Say bye-bye to my picture, and that's the end. Bye, everybody!